Hola, and welcome to episode four of Smarter Seniors, Stay Active with Coach Julio. So I wanted to change it up, and in this episode, I actually did an interview with a Sparta senior named Susan. Yes. So what you're going to see is a lot of the auxiliary exercises from episode one, two, and three in action from her home. And I also asked her questions about her thoughts about physiological versus um, chronological age, her experience with strength training, and I also dive into what motivates her. And you will be surprised that, like many individuals, is a fear of falling. Um, so it's a conversation you don't want to miss. Now, I want to, before I, I, we get rolling, I want to make put out a disclaimer. So this was a remote interview, so some of the video quality may be not optimal. But the content is great, the audio is great. So if you're a patient, you will get a lot out of this video. I've also will, I've also added some other videos um, to complement what you're seeing. And watch the whole video to the end because I also show a full clip of what a remote Sparta Senior workout looks at looks like from her home. So that's about it. I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy. So that was my little spiel. So Susan, so um, first and foremost, before we um, before we log in, Susan, you, you want to give me an update on one of your latest achievements? Yes, I have lost ten pounds. <laughs> ten pounds. And as I said to Julio, this is the first time I've lost ten pounds when I wasn't getting divorced in a hospital or having babies. And I said I don't have a comeback for that because I usually have a comeback. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and now the, the other thing is that if you want to give, well, I can explain. Susan was using a, a, a method, a system for long-term weight loss that's based on behavior modification and was personalized with her. Um, I never uh, gave her a meal plan because that's outside my scope of practice. That's for registered dietitians. I just explained to her the science of weight loss, gave her the tools and provided the motivation between sessions. Is that right. about right? That's absolutely right. And and it's the first time, I mean, I've never done Weight Watchers, so I never tracked before. Um, so it helps you think about, it, it helps you think about the choice. Like if I want to have pretzels, um, what else am I not going to eat? And how am I going to keep this going week after week after week? So it's been two months. We've done it for two months now, almost two months. Yeah, would you also agree? Because I'm huge on this. I because uh, it's based on behavior modification, basically lifestyle. That it's not a linear process. We have peaks and valleys, but we learn from the valleys. But we try to have less valleys. And uh, I gave you support and continue to give you support, so we don't turn back uh, and then kind of erase what we did. Right, right. I mean, it, it felt less yo-yo-y than those than other diets have and it felt like it's the first one I've done where it felt like I knew what I was um I knew what I was doing do you know what I mean it felt like it was organized and because you were there I felt like I had someone to report to I mean I tried once to do Weight Watchers online and I never did it I mean it just because I didn't know them and it felt like why should I tell strangers this you I know and I trust that you are, are there to help me and not harm me and so that makes a huge difference and trust really matters so I, I this kind of like uh, piggybacks about the whole Sparta Senior show is where I try to give information that, uh, regarding anything that's conducive to healthy aging. And obviously the movement and the exercise is a big part of it. But I, I guess one thing I want to I impress upon people is that if one of your goals is to is weight loss, you can do it. You 100, never give up on it. Sometimes we just need outside support guidance to help us and navigate through the uh, through that process. So I want to re uh, say this again: is that if you've lost 20 pounds at one time, then you gain 30, or if you lost five pounds and gained 10, you know, and then now you're like, hey, I wish I can go. The answer is yes, you can. So I, what I'm hearing from you, Susan, you kind of Susan, you feel kind of empowered by the tools, and the tools is basically the science of the weight loss, which is this show is not about. Um, would you agree that if anybody has a, a goal that with some help that anything is possible? Pretty much. Yes. I mean, at least in this business, I mean, yes, look, we just got rid of a president. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, 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 it was through voting. And so exactly. I, I'm going to, 
tied us into participation and also having some accountability is a big right. part of it and having some uh, personal responsibility of our actions. Uh, but congratulations again. So Thank that you. was an awesome um, intro. And now I'm going to basically talk about what this show and this interview is about. I'm, uh, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to let, I'm going to ask Susan some questions, but the whole theme is my belief is that chronological and physiological age are often very different and not an objective assessment of the person's capability. Yeah, and we have to, and just for the audience's sake, so I have a scoliosis, which means I always have some, uh, you know, out of alignment issues and one shoulder and one hip that's always a, a, a pain in various parts of my body. So yeah. we've been able to fix, um, to do the best we can under those, you know, under the physics of my body and what's possible. So since you opened that up, because uh, because because of privacy, if yeah. you want to also mention any other preconditions where I like I always say I don't cure or fix, I help manage and help right. try to make better. I right. mean, we can start from the ground up. You've also right. had a precondition in the ankle foot area. That's right. So when I first met Julio, I had had a really bad fall. I, I broke a number of ribs, but I also broke um, part of the, my ankle bone on the right side. And so he was helping rehab me because I was going on a trip in the days when we could go on trips. So I was going on a trip and I was going to do a lot of walking and I was really quite worried that I wouldn't be able to do it. And I'd been looking forward to this trip for years. So um, it really made a difference that we uh, were able to finally do the healing. I mean, the PT had worked on the bone, but it hadn't done enough for the muscle. And Julio helped me in two months to, to basically heal the muscle so that I could walk without pain. Well, I want, I want to thank you for sharing that. So I want it for the audience. And so the smartest senior show and what I do is not a promotion of my services. That's not what it is. What I want to promote is that uh, the fitness industry and the medical community can work together because I firmly believe that there's a need for a more holistic approach which can be achieved only through a concerted effort between the fitness industry and healthcare providers. So me knowing what I did in the assessment with Susan about her precondition, I actually reached out to her PT. So you always want to have both, you want to have a team to help you um, optimize your, your, your abilities, yeah. if that makes sense. So let me ask a question, Susan. Um, and by the way, my friends, uh, if you like what you're hearing, please post your comments. You can send me an email because I can also put it in my next video and I can address it. And uh, your participation is a big, is part of my show. I want you to participate. Uh, so Susan, do you think that fear may prevent older adults from participating in exercise, such as past falls or injuries? If so, could you share your thoughts and or experience with any past injuries or preconditions? Sure, so aside from what I just said about the scoliosis, um, I had a really, really bad fall as opposed to this last one um, seven years ago. I fell in a parking garage. I broke my pelvis in three places and my left wrist. So, and I had, I had for a long time this kind of idiopathic that nobody knew why fall. So every once in a while I'd be walking along and absolutely out of the blue, I'd be on the ground. And it wasn't, um, I didn't pass out. I did a million tests. Nobody knows what, what caused it. It's one of those weird, probably an electric misfiring. Knock on wood, I haven't had that, um, you know, since I've been working with Julio, but the other, um, in the summer, friends of mine were doing a big bike ride and I was going to go bike riding with them, but I hadn't been on my bike in a really long time. So I asked a friend to meet me and help me just remember how to do it. And I started crying the minute I got on the bike because I realized it wasn't that I was afraid I couldn't bike ride. I was terrified that I would fall off again and hurt something. So out of I didn't expect that. I was I just got on the bike. I'm not a crier, and I got on the bike and I went because <laughs> I was really scared. Yeah, and I, I I have to say that I identify with the fear of doing uh, an activity due to a past injury or experience, and you're not alone. Um, so one of the things that I'm big on is like when I first met you regarding your foot and your ankle is that, um, and, and, and this is part of the Sparta method is that fears and perception of limitations, uh, can prevent us from doing things where we're actually physically capable of doing. That's right. So when I first met you, I knew you were physically capable of doing something, but the fear, the perce and we never, uh, minimize someone's fear, we have to acknowledge it and then do small exercises to build that confidence that's and, right. to, and, and to go from there. So uh, that's the, uh, so, but 
Would you like to say anything about that, about perceptions of limitations, fears, yeah, and physical no, I capability? Think, I, I think that that's absolutely right. And especially when we started, I just, you know, because once you've been really hurt, you're just terrified that you're going to get hurt again and you're going to do everything you can to protect yourself. And mm -hmm. not doing something seems like the first thing you move to, right? So if you don't, you know, like if you don't move, then you can't fall, right? But then you also can't move anymore because you can't move. So, you know, there's that mm. sort of conundrum. So I think you were really helpful in trying to get me to think that through. Yeah, and now, especially during these difficult times where some of us are unable to go out because of the, the COVID-19 and some of the activities we used to do, say walking or gardening or anything like that, it has been limited. So now that we're inside, we may have less activity and what I'm getting is that that fear may come back. You know, like if I have to go outside, walk down the stairs, I haven't done it in a really long time. You know, I may have a fear of going down or up the stairs. So what I want to say is that uh, exercises and in my, and Susan, you may not know this. And in the Sparta Senior Show and Sparta Method, I call them auxiliary exercises. And my auxiliary exercises are the ones that can complement what you have done, what you're currently doing, could be with another fitness instructor or PT. And it's just like that little bridge that builds the confidence. And it also ties into strength training. And among that, and it ties in, you know, flows into fall prevention and also feeling more empowered uh, right. through, through exercise. Right, exactly. No, I feel that. Uh, so now we talked about like strength training. I kind of talked about it a little bit. Actually, I just brought it up. I haven't talked about it. Uh, <laughs> so I personally, my, I'm a numbers guy. I, I'm a nerd. And then everyone who's watching the show, you know, I always give you a suggestion of how many reps and how many rounds. And I never say you need to do this. And I may also say if it's 12 reps, you can spread it out throughout the day, do three here, three in the midday or three in the evening. Um, what, what the whole premise of strength training is that we want to have progressive challenge that's safe. So whatever I was capable of doing, let's pretend it's, if it's body weight, I was only, I'm only able to do three of these like in the beginning from episode one. But now I have Susan, she probably can do 10. And then it takes 10 reps for her to feel this area or that area. So that's progressive training. And those are the results of doing progressive training, strength training. Um, the body doesn't know what resistance is. Sometimes it could be water, it can be gravity, like I said, but once it becomes easy enough, we wanna add maybe a can, a free weight, a band, something to, uh, to challenge the body. What, um, do you have any examples from our strength training or strength training in general? It could be your legs, it could be movement that carried over to a, a daily activity, say from, to this past summer. Or it could be conditioning where you thought you may be more winded or lifting. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I I, um, I felt like, I mean, I did some gardening um, at, at our summer house over the summer, and it felt like I could do it more. I mean, I could bend over more. I wasn't so stiff. Um, so that made a, a big difference. And um, I'm definitely stronger in my, I mean, I've been doing yoga for a really long time, but um, I can tell the difference in the yoga class. Um, I mean, I can do movements I didn't. I wasn't able to, to do before. And it's not from the yoga, it's from the strength training, I'm pretty sure. I My memory may not be as not as sharp as it used to be, but did you kayak this summer or did something like oh, that? Oh yeah, I forgot about the kayaking. You're right, thank you for remembering. I actually kayaked without my shoulder hurting. It was amazing and we were, I went out with a friend on a day when we shouldn't have gone out and there was a terrible windstorm and we were kayaking back in against the tide and with the wind against us. Um, and I actually could do it. And it was amazing because I really, I think a year ago, I probably would have needed the rescue boat to come get me. Um, <laughs> but we actually made it and my shoulder didn't fall apart. So that seemed like a miracle to me. I'm sorry, I completely forgot that. Oh, yeah. So that's those are the kind of things that, uh, that's the, the measure of success that I like. Uh, we have a little pause. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, uh, it came back. So... There's two type of uh, measurements of success for strength training or exercises. My 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 favorite and the, the most important is what you can do outside, um, how it transfers over for daily activity. And the other uh, measurement for strength training is actually, like I said, I'm a nerd to see if your reps are getting easier, what you're doing, if your weight, the resistance is going a little bit higher, and it's all relative to what you want it to be, um, and it always has to be safe. Okay. So, um, so what motivates you to stay active? 
Um, I don't want to fall. Um, I don't want to go to the hospital. I want to, uh, my mother lived to 100. I'm, I'm planning on, that's my goal, to get past that. Um, and I, I really, I mean, most seniors, um, a lot of seniors die after bad falls. And um, I, that, I think that's the thing that's the most motivating for me is the fear of uh, falling again. And um, also just wanting to be able to get through my daily activity without being exhausted. Oh, good. So Susan, I just wanted to um, talk really briefly about, you said that falling is also a motivator. And then yeah. like some of, our, some of you guys who've watched my earlier episodes, um, I discussed the, 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 the areas that has the highest rate of injury from a fall. Um, so that's the wrist, the ankle, the spine, and the hip. So a lot of the auxiliary exercises that I do that tie into strength training is to make those areas stronger, wrap around those joints, um, and also to help assist with mobility uh, and flexibility. Strength training ties into fall, prevent, fall prevention exercises in this way. We need to be uh, a little bit more resilient with our body if we fall. Everybody has the opportunity to fall because we may trip regardless of our age. Right. So one right. of the goals that I try to do with strength training, progressive strength training, not only with the balance exercises and all that good stuff, is that if you fall, that we've done enough strength training to minimize the impact around those joints. Does that make sense? Yes. Because as you just said, like we could have a fractured hip or a fractured wrist. There's no guarantee, but it is very beneficial for us to do strength training. And it's I'm going to try to do a call to action here. Start strength training today. And uh, the auxiliary exercises or what you're doing with your, with your fitness instructor or your PT, just ask them to make sure you're trying to strengthen those areas. Um, and why not? Right, Susan? Absolutely. The Spartan method in action. If you want to walk back a little bit, and you're going to show two hip hinges with your hand position in front of your hips. Pull back your shoulder blades, and then show me what you remember. And we do not lock our knees. So this is a posterior chain exercise, as everyone would see in episode three. And where, where should we never feel this? My back, lower back. Perfect. So, so doing hip hinges in certain exercises, now you can stop. There are a lot of variations for everyone. So that's part one. Part two is the good morning variation with your hands behind your ears. And pull back your elbows and your shoulder blades. If you have any questions, let me know. So before she is falling, folding forward, she's making sure her shoulder blades are pulled back so her back stays flat. If you want to show a side profile view, Susan, there you go. So good morning, the variation, what it does, and we don't feel lower back. You can do one more. Okay. It changes the weight and the levers of where the arms, so now your arms become some like a form of resistance. Now you can bring your arms down. Very good. And then holding it in that position, sometimes isometrically will work that area. Right, Susan? Yep. All right, so grab your foam roller. And a lot of things in the uh, Sparta Senior Shows, we try to use things that are very low cost, inexpensive. And I can I also explain substitutes. So Susan's actually going to do a foam roller, and you're going to do five scapulas, shoulder blade pinches. Yep. So a lot of the just do five exercises that I'm doing, my friends, is to help pull you back, or it's the anti-sitting exercises. And after we do five, we can put that down. But Susan, right there, for that specific exercise, it was more for her shoulder blade to pull us back. And then when she did the hip, we worked on the hip joint. Now, this is going to be a pop quiz for Susan, and we can expect some laughter and, and a lot of other stuff. We started doing hip thrust. With the with the uh, with the foam roller, the power exercise. So I'm going to walk you through the little steps. So one was when we had it on our side, and we pass catch, pass catch. That's part one to get you comfortable with catching it. You want to do it? Yeah. You want to go do it sideways? Yeah. So we don't hit the camera. Yep. So this is hand-eye coordination, and I'm going to talk to Susan. So her target for the bottom part of that, uh, the end of that foam roller. There's someone who's about 6'2", and she's going for the chest, the Superman chest, or Superwoman. Very good. And she got it. Perfect. Now, we are going to transition that nice movement. We're going to add a hip hinge. So this is the one where it goes directly underneath my hips, and then I do a hip thrust, and I still go for that same target. You get five tries. 
And if this was like the gong show, I would have the gong. <laughs> <laughs> That's do before I Facebook. Teddy, do I get a big teddy bear and a big, uh, you know, cotton candy if I do it? Possibly. Walking okay, through. Right. Let's try that um, hip hinge, hip hinge with the thrust. If you face me and have the foam roller in front. So maybe it won't freeze. Yep. She did it. Let's do two more. And one more. So that's speed and strength. Good job. Put that down. I have it in front of you. Now let's do the side step and catch. Side step and catch. Take your time. So this is the lateral frontal plane move, movement, and I'm going to give her another. There you go. So this is the one where you keep one foot in the middle. Beautiful. Uh, many are in too many floor exercises as of now, but I just want to give you an idea of the type of floor exercises that I do do. Um, and what Susan's going to do, she would have done a whole bunch of warm-ups that was special for her shoulders, her spine, and her hips. So I just want to emphasize that, that she's done other exercises before doing a side plank, which reflects her hip strength and these muscles here on the side of her uh, of her body. And remember these muscles here, some people call them love handles. Not saying you have any. Uh, but those muscles too, those are the uh, anti-flexion muscles and the spinal muscles that we want to strengthen. All right, Susan, I let you choose your destiny. Do you want to start with a, a, a knee, a knee bend, side plank, or go all out, go, go, Let go try out first, and if that doesn't work, I'll go back to the side plank. I mean, to the knees. Right. Was... Let's try. Okay. So it's a five second hold. See the balance? Four hips up higher. Three, two, time. <gasps> okay. So I don't have any, yes, I don't have any uh, control over the descent. <laughs> <laughs> So once again, remember how she spoke earlier about her scoliosis. So anytime we have a precondition or anything like that, we're going to develop um, some muscle imbalances. Sometimes it's more prominent than others, than other people. So for right. Susan, this is a huge measurement of success that we've been doing. And you're going to experience by just doing the unilateral training that I have in, the, in all my Sparta seniors. Unilateral exercises are very important. And this is an example of a unilateral exercise because she's working primarily on one side. All right, Susan, you're the boss. Five, four hips up higher, three, her knees are up, two, down. <gasps> well, Susan, guess uh, what? This okay. is where we're coming to the end of our interview. Okay. Thank you hey. very much. Hey, can I ask you one final question? Sure. What, what do you think about this phrase, age is nothing but a number? Oh, I absolutely believe that. Just tell That's, it to the rest of the world, which doesn't believe it, especially about women. <laughs> ah, will do. So thank you again, Susan, for your time and thank for you. everyone. My coach, appreciate it. Goes, uh, goes both ways. Uh, so that concludes the interview part of episode four with Susan. And now what I wanted to do was um, to show you two different videos, short videos of Susan working from home, combining all the auxiliary exercises from episode one, two, and three. And I also have the hip thrust that you saw earlier in full action. So keep watching and I hope you enjoy it. All right, Susan, you ready to go? I am. Oh, yeah. So exercise one, you're going to do my Muhammad Ali to the side, your left foot yep. step you're forward, ready? then your right, then to the side. Okay, can you see me okay? Yeah, I see you fine. Okay, so one, left two, foot. three, four, five. Continue. Five reps. If you have any discomforts, let me know. Left foot, right foot. Doing great. When you hit Cinco, you come back home. Watching. Okay, now I lead with the right leg, correct? Yes, and in Spanish is derecha. Cinco. Five. Okay, next. Good job. Thank you. Do you. five scatchings. Hold the outside of the foam roller. Keep it level with your chest. And you're going to pull back five times. Exhale as you pull back, your arms stay straight. Inhale as it goes forward. Smell the roses, blow out the candles. Okay, that's right. That was five? Yeah. And you're okay. five. Yeah. Um, do two more slower. Slow motion. Yep. And I'll make the slow motion sound. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to do our lateral step. 
with head turns. So that's when the foam roller is in front of you. You drop, catch, left and right is one. Okay, hold on. One, your head follows is optional. There you go, it's optional. Two, we only do this as long as you feel safe and stable. Three, inhale, exhale. Four, good. Now five clock push-ups with two claps in between. Thank you. One. Inhale as you lean forward, exhale there. Two. Five. Nice job. Thank you. Three seconds to set up. All right, Susan, we're going to do the side load and catch. Show me what you got. Remember, you got that target there. It's about 6'2, six, 6'1, six, right to the chest. And I'm happy. That was it. Okay. Perfect. Now we're going to do the hip hinge. Same hip hinge form. Good morning. Yep. A little thrusting. You know your target. Continue. Right. Now we got to get tall when we finish the movement. Continue. Okay. This is all new for us. Your target's not up in the ceiling. Nothing in the sky. There you go. Yep. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. This is part of the learning process. Inhale, big exhale. Rock star, now you're standing tall. Give me two more. Stay humble. And stay tall for one second. Taller, taller, right there. Give me one more. You did it. Time, place it like a warrior. Awesome job. Everything feels good? Yeah. Nice. That was good. <laughs> that was fun. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the interview with Susan, and I am very grateful for her sharing her experience. Um, she was she is 100% an inspiration. Now, going forward, I will continue with the Sparta Seniors Show and showing you many new auxiliary exercises that you can do from the comfort of your home. So stay tuned, and don't forget to post your comments. I want to hear from you, and any ideas for the show are welcome. Till next time, stay active.